Um, so my name is Sean Montgomery, and I wear a number of hats in my life. Um, but uh, in the art world, I work under the moniker Produce Consume Robot. And today I want to talk to you about my installation artwork using technology to mediate a deep synergy between uh, installation art and scientific research. And one work titled Emergence asks the question, what is the fundamental boundary between where the human body ends and where the internet begins? And when the viewer touches the piece, the electrical signals generated by the beating of the viewer's own heart travel down to their hands, where they're detected by the installation and then propagated as pulses of light and sound into the surrounding space. The installation then further propagates the viewer's heartbeat onto the internet, capturing a digital memory with each heartbeat and uploading it to Flickr. After traveling to countries around the world, the piece has now captured over 30,000 uh, digital memories triggered by beating of the viewer's heart. And these images somehow capture the life and emotion of each person in that moment, some with a steady drumbeat and others with racing heartbeats. Uh, and it reminds us that we're fundamentally connected through this electricity-driven pump in our chests and through the electrical impulses traveling throughout the internet. And in all of its travels, Emergence began my thought process about how installation art can blur the boundaries between art and science to capture and contextualize the vast data sets of our experience. With my collaborators in Lobud, another work called Telephone Rewired delves further into that synergy between interactive art and science, while also asking the viewer to think about a future world in which we can manually toggle the switches of our own cognition. The work is based on science, showing that pulses of light and sound can actually change the endogenous rhythms of our brain, and also change our perceptions and memories. So this installation uses science to create an aesthetic experience. And rather than try to describe that experience, I want to give you a direct sense of the work. However, this involves flashing the screen. So if you're sensitive to strobe lights or if you have photosensitive epilepsy, you may wish to cover your eyes during this brief demonstration. And so what you're going to see here is the screen just flashing black and white. It's just flashing black and white, and uh, at the beta rhythm, which is a frequency used by the brain. Um, and the installation itself would be an entire room and would cycle through different brainwave frequencies. Um, but even in this simplified demonstration, it's important to note that any uh, patterns or shapes or colors that you see are entirely created by your own brain as it changes into a different mode of operation. And we've shown this work at museums and galleries around the world, uh, and we asked the viewer to wear an EEG headband to measure their brain waves while they experience the work. In addition, we further had some participants uh, perform a memory task while we modulated their brain waves. So we've so far ca uh, captured data from thousands of viewers, including brainwave data and participant responses, ultimately with, with the idea of feeding back to further the science itself. But we also wanted to create an art installation that creates a reflective space and allows the viewer to consider the potential for neurofeedback and the future of augmented and collaborative cognition. Finally, I want to tell you about an art installation called Livestream that raises public discourse around water quality. The work is a permanent outdoor installation that reads data from water sensors around the state of Kentucky and turns that data into music that can be interactively explored by viewers. The installation is a cluster of large pipes in a park in Lexington, and each pipe plays a specific data stream from freshwater springs around the state. And by incorporating proximity sensors into the pipes, viewers can choose to actively listen to a specific aspect of the water quality data. Or, as is shown here, multiple people can collaborate to conduct their own symphony from the orchestra <laughs> of, of data that runs underneath their feet. By transforming the raw numbers into musical notes, hopefully we begin to listen to the data, <laughs> even at a young age, and ask questions about what it means for our environment and ultimately for our future. And so, in summary, I hope these examples from my work highlight the potential for deep synergy between interactive art and scientific research. 
And I'd like to thank you guys for coming. And if anybody would like to uh, chat with me about science and art, I'd be happy to chat. Thank you.